Magic Hand Waving, the podcast that tries to explain fictional worlds using science. I'm Simon. And I'm Jeff. So, Jeff. Simon. (laughs) If I told you that Mm -hmm. there was, say, um, a fantastical creature that had two options in life, that it could just Mm -hmm. be itself or it could go to school and when it went to school it would become uh unto and i believe the word that i saw used was property unto property uh in the in the service of small children Mm -hmm. uh what would you say that 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 fictional creature was (laughs) uh well i think we already covered the mothman didn't we (laughs) we did we did cover the mothman (laughs) i know that's that's a big part of his of his uh What's that thing called? Mythos. That he uh, he goes yeah. to college and essentially becomes a slave. <laughs> uh huh. Is that or stand next to bridges? You know. Yeah. Well, it's why he chose what it is. I mean, the Mothman is a symbol for freedom. <laughs> right. <laughs> much like much like West Virginia itself. Hmm. Is that you're going to be your guess? Are you going to say Mothman? Uh, oh yeah, no, that's my guess. <laughs> oh, you well, something else? No, you're wrong. Uh, uh, it's the um, <laughs> story of my life. <laughs> the story of my life. No, it's yeah, it's me. That's who it is. <laughs> Ooh, that's uh, that right there is dark. That's dark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, no, uh, it, it's it's a fairy from the Fairly Odd Parents. I, oh, okay. That was my second guess. Yeah, yeah I, I, but I'm not kidding about that. They describe them as property. <laughs> uh huh. Which, like, who would they belong to as property? They belong to the children that they are fairly godparents of. Oh, sorry, fairy godparents. That's weird. Of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I I came across it at the end of my research. <laughs> I was like. That is uh, <laughs> dystopian. That's uh, what they call a twist. <laughs> yeah, really. Apparently, though, they gain more power if they are attached to a child. Okay. Who knew? Well, I did because I did the research. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I Fair. just yeah yeah. You know, I'm just I just throw in those. This is these are this is just those little chuckles. I just toss them in there, like a chuckle bomb. You just sn- yeah, just sneak them in. <laughs> Yeah. They'll they'll go off sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you you better believe it that this is a timed chuckle bomb. And it's gonna go off exactly when I want it to. Good, good. <laughs> um so uh for those who don't know, the fairly odd parents was a show on mm-hmm. Nickelodeon about a chi- a child named yep. Timmy Turner. Um, who was sad, so he gets to fairy godparents, who are... That, that's all it takes? <laughs> Just to be sad a little bit? Yes. Yes, that's all it huh. takes. And he doesn't even have, like, a bad child. Like, his parents are nice, they might be a little strict, and his dad's an idiot, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Besides the the very clear, I think privilege that this show has and promotes Uh um it's it's these he gets these two godparents that are fairies that can grant any wish he wants they're married their names are cosmo and wanda and Mm -hmm. it's just about adventures where like he makes a wish and cosmo who's an idiot like misreads the wish he just really then, monkey's paws the wish yeah yeah exactly it's, 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 it's just it's yeah it's, it's every every episode is timmy monkey paws and then has to unmonkey paw his own wish every time all right that's a fine existence i guess <laughs> it's good that he keeps <laughs> making wishes yeah yeah and you'd think he'd get a little bit better at them yeah right he's, i mean to be honest he's 11 years old so Thinking back to when I was 11 years old, I mean, I probably... I, whatever you're about to say, I do not believe that you're going to be any less pedantic than you are now. Uh, uh, well, I would say I am not very pedantic, actually, currently. I think you're the pedantic one. Mm, yeah, you're probably right. I think I think 
I, much like I do now. <laughs> You're the hand wave of yeah. the the pedantic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how he exists. I'm the one who, like, promotes the fact that standard English is actually very racist. It's actually based upon a very specific type of English from a visit specific place in london and it mm-hmm. really doesn't isn't very representative of english in the modern day but it's still used as the correct english and then you're the kind of person who'd be like yeah but there, it's correct isn't it <laughs> uh man you picked the one I counter know. example where i'm very into like no nah, it's a living language it's gonna evolve it's fine that's true <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what you would actually be pedantic about. I actually feel like we're both not very big pedants. I feel like we I both... feel like we can be though. Like if we get in a like argumentative mood, we absolutely will that's, be. That's that's true. I would say yes. Okay, I would say like the best example of us is I believe that Superman is a uh, 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 invasive species, and you believe he is <laughs> right. not. <laughs> <laughs> And I still, I hold, I hold true to that. And I respect your, uh... Incorrectness? Your stick to it <laughs> I think that's called stubbornness. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, it sounds less bad my way, though. I was trying I, to throw you a bone. No, I, I find stubbornness to be, not, maybe not an, uh, a, a virtue, but I find it to be a, um, like a, a backhanded compliment, you know? <laughs> Man, I love the way how <laughs> how you're so committed to being wrong, but you're really committed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So this is uh oh, this is a Frederator. I didn't know that. Um, what? You know? Do you know? You know who Frederator is? I'm saying that correctly. Frederator. Frederator. Yeah. The inventor of the fridge. <laughs> no. Um. Hmm. Frederator is an animation studio that's done like uh, apparently they did Fairly Odd Parents, the Adventure Time. I think they did Bee and Puppy Cat. I believe they worked on uh, whatever that Conan show was. They've done a lot of a- of independent animation. Hmm. They're I think one of the okay. better. And and I just saw that and I was like, oh. So they just kind of set the style for like American animation oh, for the past long time. <laughs> for the past like two and a half decades, yes. Yeah. Yeah, they and they do well, it very well. Hanna Barbera and then these guys. <laughs> yes, uh, and they do a very good job. They're very good at their animations. Mm. Um, anyway, so that's kind of the basic story. It's a children's show, I guess I should say. So some of this is going to be a little weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I guess the the first the first big problem we're coming up with is. Um, Kind of the main gist of the show, which is um, fairy magic. Mm-hmm. Now, fairy magic actually is very specific. I guess I should say there's two kind of there's like their inherent magic and then the magic they get from their wands. So their inherent magic okay. is, is pretty much the ability to shape shift. Um, okay. Which I mean, boring, right, guys? Uh, <laughs> I mean, how many times have we covered yeah, shape shifting? How many times have we covered shape shifting? Um, and then their wand magic is literally the power to do whatever you want, including bend space and time. Good. That'll be easy to explain. (laughs) Yeah. So I, I, yeah, it's up to you which one we want to tackle first. (laughs) Uh, uh, let's start with the inherent magic and see if we can dovetail that into the wand magic somehow. All righty. Oh, so the inherent magic is... A uh, so I yeah yeah. Let me just make sure that that I remember all these. Yes. So their inherent magic is the ability mm-hmm. to turn into any animal or inanimate object in uh that allows them to blend in to the world uh with their child. So like okay, they'll be like the child's pet or like the child's pencil. But that way they can be with the child at all times, but never be seen. This is okay, and I think my first question with that would be: Are they actually shape shifting, or is it just like the? Where is it from? Doctor Who, maybe psychic paper kind of situation. Oh yeah, where it's, where it's just, like it just looks like they look different... like mm. something that would make sense to be there. That was a that was a good that's a good grab from Doctor Who. Um, 
it, they are actually shape shifting. They are actually usable as the objects that they turn into. I don't know about the animals, but I assume hmm. also the animals. Um, there is a thing. So they, they, they do provide a slight explanation for this in the show, which is that all fairies have a fagigly gland. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, which gives them this ability. So there, there's an organ in them that gives them this ability. And uh, the only other thing I would like to say is that they seem to be able to talk whenever they turn into an animal or an object. So they remain of the ability to speak. Mm-hmm. Okay, so... I know what you're saying. I know what you're going to say. Okay, go on. You got a good idea, and it's the same idea I have. The Uh Fagigli gland turns into an inside-out version of the object and then turns right side out and, like, Uh comes out of the creature and then turns them into the... You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like... It's like they've inverted a sack, and they are now inside the object, but the outside is all there for giggly gland in the shape of the new object. Okay, and it's just as, like, elastic and can take whatever dimension and shape it needs to be? Or is there, like, a limit to it? Uh, I, I mean, I would say it would have to somehow be that it there's a limit to the shape it can take. Oh, wait, what do you mean by elastic? It's elastic. It can take any shape or size it wants okay, to. Okay, so they can do, like, a, a Loki thing and turn into a giant, beautiful horse and also a very small, annoying fr- fly. Yes. But but the, okay. the key thing I want to get in here is that they're they're turning inside out constantly. Right. Yeah, okay. That yeah, no, just, yeah. I mean, there's... <laughs> there's grounds for that. <laughs> animals that expel their insides to be their outsides. That's fine. Are there? <laughs> uh, I mean, not like regularly, and it's not particularly nice. It's usually to stop predation, and I think it's only sea cucumbers. <laughs> I think you go. I I knew that there was a basis for my thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I was un- I was not expecting that to be supported in <laughs> any way. <laughs> I am. I understand that improv is like yes and, but right now I'm doing kind of like a. <laughs> you weren't expecting <laughs> references for the yes and. Yeah, it's a it's a what uh. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I guess the thing we the thing we have to do here is like is like, if they turn to a pa- like what you're saying like the changing of sizes right. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, like that. That would be probably the. The biggest issue, I guess. Because I could see, like, going bigger, less of an issue, because mm-hmm. <laughs> you could just kind of, you could stretch that stuff out. Like, you could just mm-hmm. pull on it, or, like, fill it with something that's, like, <laughs> right. styrofoam. Yeah, yeah, that's how I usually stretch things out, <laughs> is just yank on them real hard. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's, it's um, like the Spanish hmm. Inquisition invented a creature. <laughs> right. The Mothman. Yeah, the Mothman. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no i mean i guess i can kind of get behind that and going smaller might also work depending on how small they can go because like then it just kind of constricts everything inside yeah. it yeah because they do like it in atomic level uh but I, so here's the thing mm-hmm. what if what if there is a minimum size to the fairy godparents, right? And mm-hmm. and essentially they're like blow up animals. So like even in their human form, mm-hmm. they're blow up animals. Oh, so like I like that. The issue with that is that later on in my notes, I talk about the fact that fairies actually get weaker as they get smaller. Like their magic gets weaker. Huh. So is there a way that we can tie? the gas that's filling them with the magical powers they have. Um, we'll run that by one more time. So like, so, so they're, they're like, weaker when they're smaller. So they have less gas filling them. So they can't do magic as good. Is that's, that what you're kind that's of approaching? What I'm approaching. Yeah. I don't know what the gas is and that's probably for later, uh, part of the episode. You know, uh-huh. ten, ten, well, I feel like you just made it a, this part of the episode. <laughs> 
Well, I guess I did. I guess what is that? What is that guess? I mean, I guess this means that now we have to define what like the magic is because they get weaker even with the the wand based magic. The like ability to do anything magic, which has its own set of okay of in in media explanations. Mm-hmm. Um. Hmm. I mean, what if it's I just feel like, like if it's an issue and it's smaller, there's hmm. what was that? Like was less... that a sentence? <laughs> I don't know. I lost track of what I said <laughs> later. Um, I'm just going to take another a yeah, second yeah, yeah. Take run a, take at a that. Stab at that um, buddy. If they, their magic gets weaker as they get smaller, yep. I want it to be like some sort of like interfacing issue where they can't like, uh, like they have less possibility oh. to tap into that magic. Like, Oh, that's a good idea. There's fewer magic cilia on the surface, like pushing the magic juices up to the surface. <laughs> yes, yes, the magic juices. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that. I like that. It's like it's like they're like a, a CSTR, like they're a constantly stirred tank reactor, where like the smaller you get, the less circulation you get mm-hmm. because you like are physically limited by your propeller type. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. It's a little bit of a, you know, like, uh, now we're in our own areas of expertise. I don't know Mm -hmm. if I would call yours an area of expertise. (laughs) Eh, I'm a professional amateur. I dab a little bit in a lot of things. Yeah, I think that's called a semi-professional. No, I feel like semi-professional implies... You get paid. Any amount of expertise in any one thing. <laughs> gotcha. Got, you're you're more like you're like a jack of all trades. You're you're a uh, uh, a journeyman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> journeyman entomologist. <laughs> um. No, I like that. What? Do, but what do we think this juice is? Um. Or maybe it's vape like, juice. <laughs> it's vape juice. Everyone knows the magical juice. Vape juice. Right. You should see the cotton eye blow. That's magic. Um, <laughs> I like how I said that. It really did not demonstrate how old I am to be saying that. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like, so I, an idea occurred to me. What if this okay. is like a compressible liquid, all right? So like mm-hmm. once enough pressure from the body is exerted on the fluid it becomes a liquid and that's what makes it less likely to be stirred around like it's easier to stir around gases it's less easy to stir around liquids so it's got to be a gas that like expands and then contracts and then has like that that butter zone right within like human or like real life usages Mm -hmm. um maybe how about this Maybe it's it's like hydrogen and their small uh, nuclear reactors. Do we often land at things being small nuclear reactors? I feel like that's not uncommon for us for some reason. I well, I mean, early on, it was a kind of running joke uh, <laughs> that I would shoehorn that into everything. <laughs> oh, okay, that's why. But it's a. I think it's a pretty good explanation for this. That essentially they're like they're like they've got miniaturized suns inside of them. Right. And, and uh. it, when they put pressure on that sun, it becomes less powerful, maybe more unstable. Yeah, it, that like could make more sense. I guess I don't know why them being nuclear reactors lets them do magic though. I don't. I'm just thinking of like what's the way that you could harvest energy because like that's oh when it comes down to it that's all it is. But say okay. if they're if they're like suns, if they're like stars, mm-hmm. maybe that's what allows them to alter space and time. They can like do like a kind of a wibbly wobbly spacey timey wimey stuff. To, okay, to borrow like phrase that from <laughs> more into Doctor Who. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking like like it, it ultimately it's just going to take energy to do anything they want. Like if they want to like conjure a chair. You can mm-hmm. do that if you have sufficiently, if you have sufficient energy to create a chair. Right, and then whatever that organ they have is that I forgot the name already, like just uh, helps facilitate like the making things matter. I guess uh, or converting. I, I, I guess I'm I'm that kind energy of... into like a more physical resource. I guess I'm I may be conflating two of these things. Technically, wands. Mm-hmm work off of uh 
a different group of magic than like the transformation. Mm. So maybe we could just do like, and this is what's so bizarre about they don't. This is an issue with children's shows is that they're not very consistent with their rules. <laughs> <laughs> so they get their magic gets weaker as they get smaller. But I, okay. I believe it is the wand magic that gets smaller. That gets weaker, and the so the wand magic gets weaker when they get smaller. When they get smaller, yes. So maybe maybe it is just like an interfacing thing. Like they're physically less of them is touching the wand. Yeah. And so it's like a bus issue where like you, the communication between you and your wand is mm-hmm. is limited. Right. Yeah. That makes the most sense to me. Okay. For kind of what you were explaining with it before. So let's just abandon the last eight minutes of audio. It's, Good. It's bad. <laughs> makes no sense. Um, they got an like, organ that turns inside out to turn them into different creatures. And they're like blow up mm-hmm. animals, um, right. and they get really small. And there's a bus issue. So now we're going to talk about wands. Okay. So wands are the things that can they're world ending devices that seemingly are almost. I mean, I guess they're regulated, but they probably should be more regulated than they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's just my own views. Don't think that there's okay. a second amendment I'm, for the for the wand. Yeah, I was going to say I'm not <laughs> going to attach this to any other world ending instruments that might need more regulation. Um so so here's the thing about wands. Mm-hmm. Their power comes from something called the big wand. Okay. Okay. The big wand is powered by people's belief in fairies. Okay. It takes 121 wish of watts to work. Okay. As well as any creature or human that touches the wand can use it. So it's not coming from the creature. It's coming from the wand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there does seem to be like some skill to using the wand. Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. So you'd have to learn how to, right? Yeah, like maybe like your your communication is slow at first or maybe like muddled. Like you're like, mm-hmm. I, I want you to create a dog and maybe it creates a god because... Just got your buses mixed up. <laughs> right. Happens all the time. See, that that right there, that was a good joke that Jeff should have thought was funnier, and he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I Get it? Because it's the It's, it's not the that reverse. I didn't think that it was funny. It's that my go-to was to build on the joke, but would then be <laughs> offensive for probably every religion. Well, you can choose a religion that doesn't exist anymore. Like, you can go Zeus, Thor. Eh, I mean, I guess. You it's too late now. Fake religions. Is there, I'm sure there's gods in Lord of the Rings. Or, like, <laughs> Serenai, who's from D&D, and is the only D&D god I know of. Because she's Pathfinder, not D&D. They are Pathfinder. <laughs> I was going to say, the only D&D god I know is Paylor. Ooh, I do know Paylor, but I think Paylor is also Pathfinder. Yeah, well, I mean, they're also the same game, so... Well, that's, uh, that's not true. One's Paizo, one's Wizard of the Coast. As you push up your nerd glasses. <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> <laughs> they're not it's the same, same game. game. It's not. Well, it's, it's 100% different company. the same game. Oh, no, no, they have different mythoses. Um, you wouldn't be like Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering are the same game. Well, I mean, tell that to my magic card deck. <laughs> Wait until I summon when I got that blue eyes, eyes white dragon. <laughs> it as long as the cards are in blue. sleeves, no one knows you're using cards from different games. Yeah, I got my I got my jack of hearts and my blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> Throws everyone for a loop. Start mm-hmm. using Warhammer 40k mini soon. Uh, <laughs> All right, so sorry. Um, I forgot where we were. I got distracted. Uh, we were at the big wand. The big and anyone can use it. Wand and anyone can use the wands. <clears throat> and we were like, okay, that makes sense. If they're like, so we're assuming that these are like these are like computers, right? Yeah, I guess that would make sense. I right? mean, to me, what makes the most sense is that the individual wands are like communication mm-hmm. devices to the big wand, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Wi-Fi. Like, like maybe, okay, yeah. Maybe in the olden times, there was like, um, uh, what are those? What are those? What are those things in hospitals called where they like direct where your call is supposed to go? Pagers. No, the people who wait. The people who take the big old like 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 a switchboard. Like a switchboard. 
in the early days, there was a switchboard for the big wand. That uh-huh. joke would have landed if I remembered if... the word switchboard. I feel like that happens a lot. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm a very smart person. I just don't think in words. I think right. in images. Mm. Anyway. So that's what I think with... But, like, what it, how is it doing the things it's doing? It has to create... I think you just have to claim to have a different primary language. So, like, oh, what's that word for this one thing? I don't remember. <laughs> so, are you saying that I should just lie about the fact Pretend that Pretend like you're <laughs> French this whole time. <laughs> you know, that would be great, except for the fact that my knowledge of other languages is also very bad. Yeah, well, good news is you're in America. It's that way for everybody. As long as you're confident, no one will call you out for it. Maybe that's what you should do. Maybe I should just be like, I'm, I speak American English. And then people will be like, oh, that <laughs> makes sense. I speak American English. What's that British word? <laughs> uh, switchboard. That's it. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I feel like American English is like seventh grade <coughs> English. Like, it's like what you, you, English that you could use to exists day to day but that you might have difficulty in you using it thinking anywhere else. with yeah i think that's just english though it's not a great language i disagree all right that's there we go let's keep that keep that silence in this is <laughs> by by the way listen this is how good mine and just relationships are is that this is the this is the max we argue <laughs> it's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is probably one of the most serious arguments we've had. Yeah, I mean, we've been podcast partners for like two and a half years now mm-hmm. on a show that should make us very angry at the other person. <laughs> but to be honest, <laughs> the one thing we both hold true to our heart is our beliefs about the English language. <laughs> <laughs> It just doesn't have enough room for good puns, you know? English? Liter- yeah, literally no, the, the... Well, no. The, here's the thing. Like, any... Not any. A lot of puns in English feel very forced. I think that that is like just it's very hard to sneak a subtle pun in there. I, I disagree. I think it's very easy to sneak a subtle pun in there. And I would like to direct you to literally anyone writing in like the 1930s um or like Seamus Heaney he does that kind of stuff all the time Mm -hmm. what I'm saying is that I think puns feel very forced in English and that is more of a cultural thing about the people who use English because puns I thought you were going to say a cultural thing about the people who try to make puns (laughs) no no I I think it's a cultural thing about the people who use English because English is very Mm. much like a beat you over the head with a baseball bat language (laughs) And right. less about, like, the intricacies. Like, it's not like Japanese where there's a lot of, like, pulling apart of words that you can do. In English, mm-hmm. a, a word is pretty much that word, and a lot of its historical context is lost. Mm-hmm. I think that that's, that's the issue with puns in English. But you can still make them. You just, no one's going to get them because no one remembers everything yeah, about the words Yeah, and I'll, said. I'll agree with you there because I feel like, the the odd occasion that I have to make a really good pun is like they just never land. Yeah. Like maybe there'll be one person in the room who gets it and I'm just sad the rest of the night. Yeah, it's 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 <clears throat> certainly a stripped down language to the point in time where like it's very difficult to make complexity with it. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, like haikus. It's not like German where you can just keep mashing words together <laughs> to yeah. make bigger, newer words. It's true. Or like, I, uh, again, I would go back to Japan or Japanese where like haikus don't work very well in English. No, they don't. But they work really well in Japanese because there's mm-hmm. like so many ways you can produce mm-hmm. and pull apart a word. Anyway. So what were we talking about? Uh, we were talking wand about... Wand communication? Wand communications. So I'm saying that the big wand is the one that does all the wishing. Does all the wishes. Okay. And the little wands just communicate with it. But I want to know what powers the big wand. Because it does say in, in media, mm-hmm. it is powered by the people who believe in fairies. Okay, so it's able to, like, dry it, Like, drive. Like, pull out some sort of, like, mimetic energy or something yeah let me just look up the word mimetic (laughs) take your time i'm taking it read it aloud for the listeners (laughs) the medic this that's not correct 
That's the study of memes. Medic is a different <laughs> word. Yeah, I, I maybe I have a different. Is the study of information and cultural based analogy with Darwinian evolution? I'm assuming that's not what you mean. How do you spell it? <laughs> uh, no, it's actually pretty close um the description or the idea of a meme is like a unit of like cultural information like a gene is a unit of genetic information gotcha 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 and that's where the word meme comes from does it Mm -hmm. huh look at that academics ruining everything again (laughs) (laughs) these dang nerds dang nerds Trying to get into my life. Trying to rule my life. <laughs> anyway. Um, I lost where I was going to go with this. Oh, yeah. So you, so are you saying that it's like individual packets of like human emotion? I mean, I guess, yeah. But when you put it that way, it sounds bad. I just want you to use stupid words so that stupid people can understand. <laughs> uh, I think... You mean to use normal words so people who aren't me can understand them. I don't know. I've never been called normal once in my life. I have been called stupid stupid several times <laughs> in my life. And stupid. Uh, I think I've called you or described you as normal sometimes. Not often. I mean, certainly Oh, this I- is Simon. He's my sometimes normal friend. <laughs> Yeah, and I think I think when we talk about like the cultural backstones we have, that's pretty normal for me. Mm-hmm. You know, like Wallace and Gromit. Right. Yeah, I'm assuming you've never seen it, so I actually don't think I have. Yeah, I know because we did an episode on it, and you said you had it, and it was a travesty because it's it's amazing. Uh, I think I had a good pun in that episode, didn't I? The cheese cheese cursors. cursors. That's, that's right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. Uh, big wow, we were having a tough time focusing. Yeah, no, this is why we don't record in the evenings. It's true. Um, uh, yeah, so how are so, uh, like, where does the energy come the from? The fairies like get it, yeah, how are they getting the this mimetic energy out of people? What if, um, I don't know. I, I wish I did. My my best guess was that there was like a crossbreeding occurrence between fairies and people. And okay. so and so you can like harvest their fagigly glands. Um but that, that feels... sound like it's just the matrix but for fairies. Oh yeah, but they don't hold or them in by like... fairies. But they don't hold them in like an alternate reality. It's more like right. repo men for fairies is what I'm thinking. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know that cultural touchstone, Repo Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So that's a terrifying explanation. Not Repo the Genetic Opera. I mean, Repo Man, the bad movie, not the opera. I, guess I should say that. <laughs> They're different. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so yeah, you like is that is that seem like a good explanation? Uh, I hate it. Okay, um, so then let's do something. Oh, you, do you hate it because it's gross that we have like fairy, uh, like like these fairies that like turn inside out and then they are powered by ripping well, I mean, the organs it's out one of thing. Like, yeah, they can turn inside out. Like that's just how their bodies work. That's fine. Mm. But like having their bodies can be gross like, too. Farm raising. <laughs> Like human fairy, <laughs> like genetic crossbreeds, like just to harvest whatever this organ is. I mean, I would actually say they're not farm raised; they're free range because they got to be regular people. So they're free range hybrids. That's you can continue to okay. talk. Sorry, I had is that no, that, that that's fine. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess that would be the explanation for uh, like alien encounters too then it's just they're harvesting your whatever gland yeah the figgly gland yeah and it's, it mm-hmm. seems like that's like the anesthesia wears off for i think it's good i think it works yeah like as long as you know as long as it's a free range sort of situation and, and i think the kind of the wish and fairies thing sorry i had to kill a fly that's been living in my room um <laughs> Hasn't been paying rent at all. Hasn't been paying rent. Finally got him. Yeah, I pay rent. (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, I would say I would say that makes sense, and that the idea that it's like the belief in fairies is like a complete mm-hmm. misnomer. Like it's it's just like it's like whitewashing. It's the bureau of truth, you know. Mm. Well, or maybe Fairy it's not. Washing, sorry, like everybody who like. Mm. Yeah, well, it's they not say that. that they, they, they say. Well, yeah, it's not the belief in the fairy that like powers it. It's that if you have this gland, then you believe in fairies. Ah, I like that. Like whatever, whatever thing that it has in it, like injects like, it, it chemicals like, in your brain that makes you believe in fairies. Yeah, it, it like breaks through the the firmament of of fairies. Mm-hmm. You know. See, I can also use big, intelligent words. And hit your mic stand. <laughs> yeah, I can also do that, because I can still leave my arms around. Even though <laughs> no one can see me right now, I'm alone in my room. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like that, because they actually addressed at one point in the time that Mr. Crocker, who is a man who believes in fairies, who is an antagonist in the show... Is the mm-hmm. sole source of power for the wand um, up until a point where they have a power outage. Okay. Listen, just gotta just, just gotta go with it, man. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All rightio. So there's some uh, us. We haven't really addressed this so much, but I think because like the wand, what the wand is physically doing, I think we can skip over right now. And, okay. And address this and address that question in like a side question which is the mm-hmm. fact that um there is something called anti-fairies and pixies which have magic that cannot be interfered with by wand fairy magic um on top okay. of that there's dragons that are immune to fairy magic and then on top of that there's armadillos which are also resistant to fairy magic so, Okay. So what is it about those three classifications of creatures that make them immune to this fairy magic? And let me remind you, this is a magic that has the ability to change space and time. Um. Well, first off, armadillos and dragons, just the same thing. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh, actually, that's a pretty easy explanation, so congratulations. <laughs> Um, gonna take that quick, easy win before we really dive into how changing space and time is doesn't affect everything else. Um, oh, what do we want to go into like field theory? <laughs> do you wanna do we do you wanna go? Because <laughs> I guess I would it? be the one explaining field theory. No, I yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So what was it? Dragons slash armadillos are like just totally okay. immune to it and then and, and then there's something called an anti-fairy and a uh-huh. pixie that are that are fairy regular fairy uh-huh uh magic is unable to interfere with so it's so a wand magic normal wand magic okay can they also do like their own magics yes they can Hmm. So that's what I was thinking. Like, like if they're like anti fairies, or, or in a way that it's like a negative fairy, it it right. just kind of like ooh. they their magic just like uh, is destructive interference with fairy magic. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Was that was like yeah, exactly, just destructive interference with fairy magic, or that it was something along the lines of like magnetism. Where if you have two of the same, two magical creatures. So what I'm mm-hmm. saying is that like fairies all draw their magic from the big wand. Which is, mm-hmm. I guess, a, I could say a positive magical source. And right. then anti-fairies also have a positive magical force. And pixies have a magical energy force. So that they're all repelling each other. Okay. I can get I behind thinking. that. Yeah. Um, and that way, humans who have no magical energy, maybe, are like a negative. So like fairy magic is actually mm-hmm. attracted to humans mm-hmm. yeah and that also explains why they would be stronger when being bound to a human because like like uh like a like a volt because <laughs> they're no longer monopolar yeah essentially it's like a, it's a potential difference so you have now like instead yeah. of going to ground you're going to a negative polarization mm-hmm. yeah 
I like that. I feel like that's the best, like, <laughs> basis of an explanation that we have for this whole episode. I, I agree. And it all came from me thinking about 220 watt uh, or 220 volt uh, plugs. Mm, mm-hmm. I was having a conversation with about a couple of days ago about them. <laughs> okay. They're interesting. Listen, United States electrical I'm... codes make no sense. I'm not disagreeing with you. Uh, I actually have a... What is the name of If you're going to say another podcast. And I'm no, not another flip. podcast. YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, you have another you. YouTube. Is it is it Technology Connections? <laughs> yep, you got me. <laughs> I was going to be like, because I was literally just watching that earlier. <laughs> Love Technology Connections. Oh, it's it's so such good. a good... <laughs> Anyway, so we got that. Uh, what else? Actually, we have des- we have described a large portion. Wait, so why are arm? I mean, I've met an armadillo before. Why is it? <laughs> <laughs> I was about to skip over that. Why is it immune to fairy magic? Um, I mean, it's the like neutral. It's the ground in this, or it's like uh, it, in- insulative. Like, yeah. It's got too high of a dielectric for the fairy magic. Sure. I, so we have just done this with field theory, and we've just done it without <laughs> explaining it. <laughs> it's fine. Field theory yeah. is, is everything's a field. <laughs> All right, this is as much an explanation as need for field, th- oh, yeah. field theory, just how fairy magics work. Yeah, fairy magic is an additional field on top of gravity and electromagnetism and strong and weak forces. Guys. Yeah, it's simple. Yeah, it's simple. Just deal with it. Anyway. <laughs> God. So here's the thing. Uh, we're going to go into a specific episode this time. And this is the last thing we're going to do. Okay. So don't worry, listener. You just got one more thing to listen to. <laughs> and it's okay if you're a little sad. We'll We'll be here in another couple of weeks. Well, two weeks. Another fortnight. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so there's an episode mm-hmm. where a man whose name is Doug. Funny. <laughs> Not Doug. Funny. <laughs> Listen, I have his name somewhere in my Brain. Doug Dimado. In your Doug folder. Dimadom. <laughs> Dimadom. Yeah. How? Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's just the guy's name. It Doug is his Dimidome. name, Doug Dimidome. Um, he he creates a world uh-huh. where when people drink his milk, they become like mind controlled zombies. Okay. And he creates the perfect housing development with it, which is obvious. I mean, real estate market's real hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Zillow, apparently the only people to lose money in this real estate market. Are they lost money in this real estate market? How? Oh, yeah. They bought up a bunch of houses, and now they're trying to dump them, and they're laying off 25% of their workforce. Oh, boy. That's... Yeah. Uh-huh. It really just brought down my day. I was having... I was flying high. <laughs> <laughs> All those uh, Zillow stocks that are now worthless to you. Well, no. I mean, more so I was just, like, sympathetic to the people who got fired. Oh yeah, um, no, for sure. But I don't, I don't have. I'm sure they'll find stuff. something. Hopefully, maybe I don't know. Kind of a tough uh, job market right now. <laughs> can be. Yeah, yeah, it can be. Uh, anyway, yeah. Moving on. I want to know. So he desc- specifically da, 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 da. he specifically describes it as genetically modified milk that right. is doing this. So I want to mm-hmm. know how he genetically modified cows to produce mind control milk. Uh, I mean, is it mind control in that, like, they get a signal and they do a thing? Or is it mind control in that, hey, if you don't do this, I'm not giving you any more of this addictive milk? Ooh, I think it's the former. I Mm. like the latter. The latter would be very fun and easy to explain. Yes. Former, very difficult. However, we have ten minutes to fill, so let's go with the former. (laughs) Uh well, it's not like, they're not like Doug Dimadome has a uh, a deal with Bill Gates where they have 
It's the you know, 5G. Nanobots and trackers and 5G and the cows that make the milk. Ah, yeah. And does the milk also make you magnetic, maybe? Madmatic? Magnetic? Oh, magnetic. Yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> if we're just making up silly things. Uh, okay. I'm going to not take that. It's, it's not what I'm looking for, though. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I want to know, like, so, like, what does it take to mind control somebody? Right? Mm-hmm. Um, like, is it like... Mm, I think it mostly takes tricking them into doing things. Yeah, I would agree with that, too. I don't think that you can, like... So what I'm wondering is, is it, like, maybe just a, like, motor cortex kind of hijacking? Like, like they're, they're <laughs> Are we going... just doing chytrid again? Is this chytrid milk? What's chytrid? It's the fungus that infects ants and make them go to a high place to like infect other ants it wasn't going to be that uh i mean maybe it was i don't know does that actually now that i think about it it kind of also works if it's going to like hijack kind of motor functions yeah no it's just like you know boring like you know standard like just be a boring average milk toast person yeah yeah yeah, exactly. Milk toast. That's a good pun. Person. Jeff didn't realize he did. Is that a pun. even a pun? Milk I think toast. That's just well, because they're literally they're literally drinking milk. Oh, <laughs> look at that! That is a good pun. Uh, that is a good pun. You, you did a good job. <laughs> See, I'm trying to catch your I'm trying to catch your good jokes when they happen. <laughs> uh, every now and then. Sneak up on me too, listener. Don't worry. <laughs> that's that's just how good of a how good of a comedian <coughs> Jeff is. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just it's just second nature to just him. Open my mouth and comedy pours out of it. Oh yeah. So we think that this is like a fungus. This is fungus milk. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Then I got nothing else written down that we got to explain. All right. Well, we solved fairies this is one of the first times we've made it all the way through all of the notes i've made it's pretty impressive. yeah normally you'll like have a list of notes and you're like i'm not sure if this is enough but we'll see and then we get halfway through it yeah i would i will say it was very funny i only erased half the notes from the previous episode which was vampires and i sat there looking at them for a little while wondering why blood meals was one of the notes i had written <laughs> But I was like, oh, no, that's wrong. That's the other one. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's the end of our podcast. Uh, yeah. You can find us. You should like and subscribe to us on your podcasting app. Or you should leave you a should. comment on Apple Podcasts you can also or anywhere do that. else. Yeah. And then maybe you should uh, visit us on our website. Uh, yep www.pedantichandwavium.com or www.pedantichandwavium.com thehandwavium.com that's another one <laughs> or <laughs> jumptime.com you do or... have to type it in that like upward inflection though it's it's a little difficult to get there <laughs> there's also my thick spoilers <laughs> Also has a w- uh, I think w- it's w- just <laughs> my thick spoiler, um, oh, man, and it's right. two two C's. My T H I C C <sighs> spoiler dot com. That's a good joke right there. Um, yeah, so uh, is that you can man. get to us on Twitter at P Mm-hmm. Talk to us, or you can leave us show suggestions on either our website or by email or or uh to us and we're also on youtube we are yeah that's where we've had the most direct engagement with listeners Ooh, yeah that is where we've had the most direct engagement for listeners and maybe if you feel like it listening to this episode maybe hit that like button on the flat earth episode because currently it's sitting <laughs> at two to six good yeah anyway yeah so i think that's it that's it you have you have anything else? Any any projects? I you're, don't. You're All ready my to announce finally? No. All right. Well, that happens. Uh, so yeah. Guess that's it. Have, have a good night, listeners. Project.
We'll talk to you later. Oh, we yeah. love you. Wait, 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 wait. All right, I'm here. I'm back. <laughs> I turned the recording back on. <laughs> oh man, that means I gotta adjust. It's fine. I'll just adjust the timings. <laughs> we gotta, we gotta do the my part of the episode, which is what did we learn? What did we learn? Uh, we learned to be careful about your milk sources. Ex- well, actually, that's a pretty good thing. Yeah, man. Listen, raw milk may seem good, but it has a lot of bacteria in it. And and autoclaving, sorry, not autoclaving, sterilizing, pasteurizing, that's the word for it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really destroy that much of the milk protein. So deal with it. <laughs> don't get don't get mind control. though. I mean, I guess ultra pasteurizing. Ultra pasteurizing is fine. It just makes it taste a little funny. I don't know what but ultra pasteurizing actually is. Lasts longer. Is it a hundred? Is it? It's higher than one hundred and sixty degrees. I'm I forget what it is, but I had to test the flavors. Oh yeah, that's like what's used funny. for milk. That's right. Well, it's like a longer shelf life milk. Yeah, I think they just they heat it up more. That could be. I think that's all they do. But it doesn't really mm-hmm. do that much to your milk. No, what, it what, really doesn't do much. No, take it from us. People, on the <laughs> I internet. worked at a milk factory for <laughs> nine months. It's well, you yeah, it's true. You did, <laughs> and I, I because they were awful, and you had and drank they were. milk before. Well, I'm lactose intolerant, so it's been a while, but I have before. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, now you can now you can do your sign off. All right. Well, I mean, I did it. You want me to move it to but this part? They already know how much we love them. Okay. Well, it's fine. It's this much. You well, can't yeah, see it, if... listeners, but I'm holding my hands really far okay. apart. I mean, if you if you hold on for another 20 seconds, we can make it to an hour of recording. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we well, can. Do you want to just vamp no, for don't... another seven seconds? We don't have to do Well, it's nine seconds for me, but... Oh wait, we we we're not including the beginning part of this, so it's probably like another minute. So never mind. Let's not do this for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was All right, nice goodbye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>